the economy, the NHS, housing and immigration. For the mayoral election, things are different, with house prices and transport coming top of the list of what voters want to see the candidates perform on. Luke Hanrahan investigates the impact that London's housing issues are likely to have on voting choices come May. At 33, Claire McCallion is still renting. A teacher who thought she'd have her own home by now. No option but to house share with three others in Blackheath, the cost even just for a room, causing her to consider her future in the capital. Wanted to save, maybe buy my own place or even rent my own place, but it's just impossible. I, I, it's impossible to do it at this stage and I'm nearly in my mid-30s and you think at this point in my life I should be able to do that and not be living in shared accommodation like I was as a student at 18. It is no surprise that our poll has found rent prices and house prices are two issues paramount to Londoners. Most young professionals in the capital can't afford to buy, forcing them to rent, making the market increasingly competitive. The question is which mayoral candidate is most capable of fixing London's rental crisis? For all the mayoral candidates, housing is a priority. The two main rivals must now prove they have what it takes. Both recognise that we need many more new homes. Zach Goldsmith is saying that by 2020 he will be building 50,000 more new homes in London. We need that, but we actually need that now. Um, Sadiq is talking about building 80,000 homes a year and he's concentrated more on making sure they're affordable and saying 50% of those have been affordable. That's fine, but you've got to wonder how that's going to be financed. Nick Ferrari hears from Londoners every day on his breakfast show. He knows housing matters. The problem is that the candidates, the main candidates, all have the same sort of solutions and ideas, but it's delivery. If you look at the last year, the current mayor, Boris Johnson, promised 42,000 homes. It's still too few. He actually delivered just over 18,000. These are great words. They hit home with Londoners, but can they actually deliver in practical terms? That will be the key expect all the candidates to promote their housing credentials at every opportunity over the coming weeks. Luke Hanrahan, ITV News. The final and oldest Hassan Garden jewellery raider has been jailed for six years and three months. 77-year-old Brian Reader from Dartford helped plan the burglary but pulled out halfway through. His sentencing has been delayed after he suffered a stroke in prison. He appeared at Woolwich Crown Court via video link. Europe's biggest solar farm is taking shape on the edge of London, already the size of eight football pitches. The panels cover part of the Queen Elizabeth II Reservoir on Walton on Thames. When all 23,000 are in place by the end of this week, the electricity they generate will power the nearby sewage works. You've got somewhere to build a renewable installation and somewhere to use the power. You match the two together, you've got an economic scheme. If it's blistering sunlight, um, then there is more, but on a day like this, it will still be performing at a significant percentage of its normal peak load potential. A school in Walthamstow started getting its pupils to run a mile every morning to improve their fitness. Copper Mill Primary School has introduced the idea to teach the children the habit of regular exercise. It's copied from a scheme in Scotland and the head believes it improves their concentration in lessons. As a school we are really passionate and committed to ensuring that our young people uh, understand about healthy lifestyles and about keeping active and how important that is to their health. Star Wars actor John Boyega has defended comments he made at an awards ceremony on the weekend while referring to the row over the lack of diversity within the film industry. The Peckham-born star was speaking at the Screen Nation Film and Television Awards where he won Best Male, but it was forced to take to Twitter to clarify what he meant. Rhea Chatterjee has a story. An unknown amidst the instantly recognisable. His iconic first role, a stormtrooper in Star Wars, triggered a tidal wave of fame. And with it comes intense scrutiny. Whilst accepting his award for best male performance in film, he dipped into the row about the lack of diversity in the film industry. To complain about what is going on is not going to benefit us. It is not. Be the change you want to be. Be the change. I continue in focus. Thank you so much, Screen Nation. 
Boyega soon found himself wading through criticism on social media, which he was quick to address. Regarding my comments at the Screen Nation Awards, just to clarify, I'm not saying that complaints are invalid or should not be heard. I am saying that words without action can't help right now. I agree that we need to be heard, but some do the talking and no work. The very next evening, he took home another award for Best Male Newcomer, thank you. Uh, thank notably you. leaving politics out of his acceptance speech. JJ, uh, thank you so for your ongoing support during the seven-month process, but you know what? I've proved myself now. Don't ever put me through a seven-month process again for a role. Empire Awards is, is a, a great hub for, for amazing talent to be recognized, especially when you're just upcoming or a newcomer, and it's good to be appreciated when you just arrived. He's got a BAFTA and now two more awards to remind him just how far he's come. Rhea Chatterjee, ITV News. All right, let's take a look at the weather forecast. Here's Martin. Seems to be brightening up, lads. Oh, yeah. Lovely, Roy. See you tomorrow. Hello again. Dry and cloudy out there for the first half of tonight. In the early hours, though, we'll start to see a few clearer breaks. And that means tomorrow morning we're off to actually quite a decent bright start. Some sunny spells around for all of us. Barely a breath of wind. A very pleasant morning. Into the afternoon, we're going to see a bit more cloud build for some of us, but we're still holding on to some half-decent bright breaks. And temperatures similar to what we've seen today, really, up at 11 degrees. Looking further ahead, things staying largely settled. It's going to be pretty cloudy. Just a hint of some rain on Thursday night. Good night. What a nice fella. John. And finally, as if we needed to be told, London has been ranked the best city in the world by users of the website TripAdvisor. They looked at millions of posts over the past year by travellers, with London coming out top for the second time. The Tower of London got the best reviews of all the capital's attractions. To see where else made the list, go to our Facebook page. And that is it from the London team. We are back tomorrow with updates in Good Morning Britain. But for now, have a very good evening. Bye-bye.